All right, here we go with part three of lesson 1.3. A um, couple special limits I want to show you. These are cases where um, you kind of need to just sort of memorize these because uh, you would not be able to do direct substitution. You can see on the first one, if I was to try to take the uh, limit of this function as x approaches 0, I would not be able to plug a 0 into this um, in order to do direct substitution because of that denominator. So uh, if you take a look, though, at what the graph would look like for this, let me just show you. So you can see uh, real clear on this how um, as x approaches 0 from both sides, um, I'm hitting that value of 1 for the y value. So that's where this guy comes from. Um, by the way, this can be anything as long as this is the same as this. So this could be um, x to the third over x to the third. It could be 5x over 5x. Um, anytime this is the same as this, as x approaches 0, you're going to get a value of 1 right there. So that's one of them. Uh, the other guys are these, and you're welcome to take a look at those graphs because they do help you see why this is what it is. Um, but all of these only work when x is approaching 0, so keep that in mind. If they have other values right here, then that's a different scenario. right? So anytime we have this scenario, as x approaches 0, it is 0. Uh, for this scenario, it's e. So when given cases like this, um, most of the time the way you're going to apply this is to take what you have and try to make it look like one of those three scenarios so that you can sub in these answers that you're seeing. So for example, if I had tangent of x over x, well, we don't have a, um, a special formula for that, but uh, we know tangent is the same as sine over cosine, so I could rewrite that problem to look like this. And now this first set of parentheses models one of these scenarios. So I know that I can put a 1 in for my first set of parentheses. So that takes you to right here. Um, on the other set of parentheses, I can do direct substitution. Uh, so I can plug in a 0 for this x right here. Uh, and we can say the cosine of 0 is 1. And now as I clean it up, I get my overall limit is 1. So go down to the next one here. Um, Again, what you're looking for within this scenario is in order for this to fit the model that you saw up above, this needs to be the same as this. So if that's 4x, then I need this to be 4x. So one thing we could do on this guy would be to multiply by 4 over 4. And that gives us this look right here. Now these two things are the same. So I know the sine of anything over that same value is 1. And now I can now I bring in that outside 4, and this is my limit. And then one more. Let me go down to this guy. Again, keep in mind we can do direct substitution if it's defined at that value. So as we talked about up above, uh, those models were really for cases where you were approaching 0. So if I had a case on this one, like what's the limit of this function as x approaches pi? Uh, well, this is a case where I could easily just do direct substitution and plug in pi for this guy and for this guy, uh, and we get this look right here, right? And the rest would just be simplifying like you guys are have already been doing for several chapters up to this point. So uh, let me take you down to this one. There's going to be cases like this one where there's going to be more than one approach to this. So let me give you two scenarios for this one. Uh, we know that sine squared is equal to 1 minus cosine squared, so I could make that substitution move and get this look here. I can factor this. This is a difference of squares, and so that it looks like this. Now it fits one of the models that we have up above. So this middle one that we saw right here, the 1 minus cosine of x over x, is one of those cases. And so for this piece right here, I can sub in that 0, right? Or I can replace it with a 0 from the formula that we were just looking at up above. Um, that brings us to here. I can do direct substitution with the other factor, this one here. I can do direct substitution by putting in 0 right here. So overall, this times 0 is going to be 0. That was one approach. Uh, in blue, you'll see the other approach that you could have done. Uh, sine squared can be written as sine times sine instead of sine squared. And now this fits the model that we see up above. So I could replace this guy with a value of 1. 
I can do direct substitution on the other guy, the other factor, and comes out to be this. All right, and then the last one we're going to look at here is coming back to our difference quotient uh, that we have looked at throughout the year this year. Again, remember, this is basically slope. It's like saying y minus y over x minus x. Delta x just means the change in x, um, which is like x minus x. So basically just our slope formula, uh, also known as the difference quotient. So a couple things. We're just going to do some substitution on this. So they're telling us here that delta x uh, we're looking for the limit as delta x approaches 0. Again, I cannot do direct substitution because that would be that 0 on bottom. We're told right here that f of x is this quadratic right here. So we're just going to sub in this guy for f of x. So as you've seen on these, I have f of x plus delta x. So you can see we're putting in um, x plus delta x here and here in order to get this first scenario minus f of x which we know is just this over delta x all right so we're just doing that little substitution and then we're going to simplify from here so this does need expanded um, you're going to distribute the negative four that's going to give you this look that you see down below and as always when we do this correctly um, the proper things cancel so you get quite a few things that canceled out you can see all the blue marks uh, were the things I was canceling out after I had done all the expansion. Uh, from there, delta x goes into all three terms. It goes into that one, to that one, and to that one. So those guys can all cancel out. That leaves you with this scenario. Now I can do direct substitution and sub in my zero for delta x. And that leaves you with this right here. So this, by the way, is we're going to be doing uh, chapter two before too long. Chapter two is all about derivatives. Um, and, and the derivative of a function is simply a slope function. Um, and so when you do the uh, difference quotient or the slope function that we were doing up above, it creates a derivative like you see right here. Um, and so this will be our derivative function or our function for slope. Uh, there will be an awesome shortcut to that called the power rule. Uh, so that 2x minus 4, and I know we've mentioned this earlier in the year, but your shortcut, your power rule is where you take your exponent multiply it to the front and then subtract one from your power so multiplying that two to the front becomes two x to the first minus four because there's a one right here you would do one times four Th this one becomes zero so x to the zero is one and so if we did all that we are left with this as our derivative right so the same answer we got by doing our difference quotient right there. So all that is to, the whole purpose of that is to uh, basically help people see why a derivative function is simply a function for slope, right? Because that's where it comes from. It comes from that difference quotient. And that's it for part three.